Although USMLE Step 1 has transitioned to pass-fail, it's still an incredibly challenging exam that you shouldn't take lightly. Here's how to prepare for step one in 2022. What's going on guys? For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jubal, physician entrepreneur based in Las Vegas, formerly in plastic surgery. USMLE step one has long been regarded as the most important test that future doctors take. Back when I was in medical school, if you wanted to match into a hyper-competitive specialty like plastic surgery or dermatology or ENT, things like that, then you needed to achieve a substantially high score on step one. And if you didn't do well enough on this one test, then you could essentially kiss your dream specialty goodbye. Well, as of January, 2022, this is no longer the case. Step one has officially transitioned to pass fail. And although pass rates for this exam have historically been high with approximately 97% of students from US and Canadian schools passing the exam on the first try in 2021, many are concerned that the transition to pass fail will lead to more students failing the exam. By making the exam pass fail, there's now less incentive for students to do as well as they possibly can. And when you lower the bar, people often aren't willing to jump as high. This could be problematic since even just passing step one is a challenging endeavor. There's a great deal of content on the exam and you need to put in substantial effort to pass. So with that being said, let's cover the various resources that you should be using for step one prep, as well as the best way to approach studying to make passing step one a breeze. Let's start by going over the various resources that you should use for your step one prep. The gold standard for resources are often referred to as UFAPs. That means UWorld, First Aid, Anki, Pathoma, and Sketchy. All right, so first there's UWorld. This is a comprehensive question bank and it's often regarded as the single highest yield resource for step one. The consensus among medical students is that the questions are very similar to the actual exam, both in content and in difficulty, and many students also find the explanations, diagrams, and tables that come with each question to be incredibly helpful for reviewing information for the exam. All right, next there is First Aid. First Aid is a review book that covers almost everything you need to know for step one, including helpful mnemonics to memorize key information. Students often refer to this as the Bible for step one, as it is incredibly high yield and contains all the topics that you need to know for the exam. But that being said, it doesn't always go to the level of depth that you need to know for each topic, so you will need to supplement it with other resources. The next is Anki, and you've definitely heard me talk about space repetition time and time again on both Med School Insiders as well as on this channel, and for good reason, because it works. Given the breadth and depth of knowledge that you need to know for step one, there's a delicate balance between retaining and forgetting information. Anki is the go-to for space repetition in medical school. By reviewing information at increasing intervals, you can maximize retention while minimizing forgetting. And there are a variety of pre-made decks out there. However, the Anking deck is regarded by many students as the best for step one prep. Unlike other pre-made decks, this one is constantly being updated, added to, and organized to work with the most common USMLE materials. But that being said, there are other pre-made decks out there that students swear by, like Bros Encephalon, Lightyear, and these also integrate really well with the USMLE common prep materials. And of course, you can also make your own deck, which has the benefit of being more personalized to you and your weak areas. However, the biggest drawback of doing this is, of course, time. Next, we have Pathoma. And most medical students will agree that Pathoma is the gold standard for learning pathology. There are many a meme about Dr. Sitar. The book or PDF combined with the video lecture series breaks down just about everything you need to know for pathology and is a super high yield resource that I found extremely useful myself. Lastly, there's Sketchy Medical. And I used Sketchy for micro during my step one prep and it was incredibly helpful. And they now have offerings in other areas too. But most students agree that their micro and farm offerings are where they truly excel. These topics are incredibly memorization heavy, so things like flashcards are obviously helpful too, but many students would agree that sketchy, because of the diagrams and the storytelling, et cetera, the memorization becomes even easier. And they use pictures and storytelling to teach you all the high yield topics in a more memorable way. And additionally, the videos are actually kind of entertaining and easy to go through during breaks or downtime when you aren't as highly focused, but you still want to be productive. All right, so practice exams, although they're not part of the UFAPS acronym, Practice exams are obviously a key, key, key component to your step one prep. There are generally two recommended resources for your practice exams, the UWorld self-assessments and the NBME practice tests. The NBME is the same body that administers the step one exam 
And their practice tests are often made up of old USMLE Step 1 test questions. And for this reason, it's recommended that you go through as many of the NBME tests as possible, especially in the later half of your test prep as you approach your actual exam. The NBME offers seven self-assessment tests, including the free 120, as well as six Step 1 self-assessment tests. Now, in addition to the NBME practice tests, there are also the UWorld self-assessments. And much like the UWorld question bank, these self-assessments are similar to what you can expect to see on the exam day and give you a good idea as to how you'll perform on the real thing. Although these resources, the UFAPs plus practice exams, should make up the bulk of your step one prep, there are other supplemental resources that can be incredibly useful both during your preclinical years and in the weeks leading up to step one. First, there's Boards and Beyond. This is a comprehensive resource that corresponds to the material covered in first aid. It consists of video lectures and USMLE styled question and corresponds to the material covered in first aid. Next, there's AMBOSS. This resource is similar to UWorld in that it's a question bank with USMLE styled questions but it also contains a clinical library that many students find helpful during the clinical years of medical school. Anecdotally, many students have said that the questions are more challenging than what you'll actually experience with UWorld and less representative of the types of questions on the real test. The consensus among students is that the explanations of their answers are also not as helpful as the ones that you'll find on UWorld. And for that reason, a lot of students recommend this as a supplementary resource to be used either before UWorld, during the pre-dedicated period, or after you've gone through UWorld to help dial in areas of weakness. Next, there's Golian Audio Lectures. I used Golian Audio Lectures for pathology during medical school, and I found the lectures very easy to listen to during what would otherwise be downtime or wasted time. I would listen to them while driving or or walking to school or getting groceries, etc. Now, that being said, it does depend on how you value your time. Now, I tried listening to them at the gym for some time, but I stopped because it took all the enjoyment out of lifting heavy things and then putting them back down. This brings me to the last resource and the sponsor of this video, MedSchool Bootcamp. MedSchool Bootcamp was designed from the ground up to be an all-in-one resource for your step one prep. With features like high yield videos, Anki style review questions, high quality question banks, and an easy to navigate mobile app, they've taken all the best parts of other step one resources and condense them into one easy to use package. You can watch a video lecture, immediately go through Anki style recall questions, and then review these questions in your daily warmup. As you become more confident with the material, you can practice what you've learned with high yield, board style questions containing detailed explanations and high quality illustrations to help you review. MedSchool Bootcamp even includes links to video content within the explanation for those topics that you need extra help with. Their user interface is clean and easy to navigate with many interactive features, including a quick start menu and search bar to help you get to the topic that you need to study in as few clicks as possible. They also have 24 7 TA support to answer any questions you might have. Although MedSchool Bootcamp is a newer resource and you should still utilize the resources we discussed previously, they can be a great tool to have in your corner. Even beyond step prep, they have a variety of tools to help you through your foundational courses, including a comprehensive anatomy question bank with high quality cadaveric images. MedSchool Bootcamp has received a lot of positive feedback from students and they are constantly adding and updating content to become a true next generation medical education resource. Learn more at bootcamp.com com forward slash med school. The first 20 students to use the discount code KJMD2022 at checkout will receive a free one year subscription. Thanks again to Med School Bootcamp for sponsoring this video. Now that we've discussed the various resources you have at your disposal, let's talk about how to use them. There are two phases to your step one preparation. There's the pre-dedicated period and the dedicated period. The pre-dedicated period consists of the several months leading up to your exam and the dedicated period are those four to eight weeks that your school usually gives you just to study for the exam with minimal, if any, other responsibilities. So let's start with the pre-dedicated period. The goal here is to build a foundation. We recommend getting a first pass through first aid and pathoma at least once before your dedicated period. Supplemental resources such as Anki, Boards and Beyond, and Med School Bootcamp can also help dial in information from these two primary resources. Some students have found success in going through video lectures while reading along in first aid and taking notes and then adding the Anki cards to their rotation to review. You can maximize your time by watching sketchy medical videos while you're eating instead of watching TV. Consider these a form of low stress studying that you can do while taking a break from practice questions or video lectures. Next, you should try to finish your first pass of the UWorld question bank, and this is arguably your best study resource. Set a daily question quota so you can complete the entire question bank before dedicated starts. Lastly, make sure you're still maintaining your performance in medical school. Although preparing for board
boards is important, you still have to pass your exams and complete your other commitments. Spend about a quarter to a third of your day keeping on top of coursework and lectures for medical school, and the remainder of your day going through UFAPs. You should actually switch to nearly 100% focus on coursework in the days leading up to your school's block exams so you can make sure you do well. And if you can maintain this rhythm throughout your preclinical years, you'll have a solid foundation of knowledge going into your step one dedicated period. So now let's cover the approach to dedicated period. Your dedicated study period often varies between four to eight weeks. Now first, decide on your resources. The UFAPS protocol should of course be your core. I also used Golian audio lectures for pathology, which I found pretty useful. Try not to have too many resources during your dedicated study period. You will otherwise quickly get overwhelmed because you can't get through all of them. Once you have your resources, creating a plan of attack is key. So during my dedicated period, each day was divided into three four hour studying blocks of morning, afternoon, and evening, with five to 10 minute breaks once per hour during each of these sessions. I followed this daily structure from Sunday through Friday. Every Friday evening block was for fun and relaxation, meaning Fridays after 5 p.m. I did not work. And every Saturday morning up until lunchtime was reserved for groceries and laundry and other errands, but I got back to studying immediately after lunch. Granted, when I was studying for step one, it was not pass fail, so this level of intensity is probably not required for most. Once you have your daily schedule determined, you should go back and prioritize your study materials to organize your weekly study. If you've already built a solid foundation during your pre-dedicated period, then I recommend going through first aid and UWorld at least once during your dedicated period. Figure out how many pages of first aid and questions of UWorld that you need to get through each day to reach this goal. I also recommend using some form of spaced repetition, of course Anki being the most popular, the default, and use this to really hone in on your weak topics and missed concepts. You can take questions from UWorld that you got wrong that you seem to really have an issue with and then add cards on those topics to your deck and then just regularly review those Anki cards every day. And if you're staying mindful on the number of cards you create and you don't overdo it, then you'll have a pretty efficient and effective way of reviewing the topics that you truly need to focus on. Lastly, for practice tests, I recommend you take at least one during the beginning of your dedicated period for self-assessment reasons and the majority of the rest of them sprinkled out, but more towards the end. These practice tests will help you get used to the USMLE question style, hone your endurance, and master your pacing. I took my first practice test, which was an NBME test, within the first two weeks. I then took four additional practice tests in the two and a half weeks before my test. Alternatively, you can take one practice test per week during your dedicated, and then ramp up to two tests per week during the last two to three weeks of dedicated. I do not recommend taking a practice test within the preceding 48 to 72 hours of your actual test because you wanna be fresh for the real deal. And you should absolutely 100% review your practice test thoroughly and see why you got questions wrong. You should also try to pick out the most important details that were needed to answer the question and consider what information was only put there to confuse or mislead you. We highly recommend taking the NBME free 120 before your test. The reason for this is the material covered on this practice test is often very high yield and sometimes questions can be repeated on the actual test. For students who battle with testing anxiety, the NBME offers this practice test in person at various testing facilities. And this can really help reduce any nerves you might have. And after that, all that's left is to crush the exam. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this video or this other video. Much love and I'll see you guys there.